Alright guys, Chelsea have just beaten Borussia Dortmund by two goals to nil to knock them out of the Champions League, coming back from a goal down in the first leg. And it was a brilliant performance by Chelsea. They could have arguably won this game by more than two goals, I feel. Uh, first half especially, it was a very dominant performance. And Dortmund very rarely caused any problems. I think Marco Royce's free kick about halfway through the half was about as much uh, of, you know, a, a good chance as they created, to be honest. So, yeah, the chances for Chelsea, there, there was numbers of them. Uh, there was a couple of offsides, which uh, were very close to being scored. Uh, Sterling had had a bit of a problem with uh, just straying offside throughout the game. I think there was probably three occasions. Uh, Havertz came close to scoring on uh, more than one occasion um, before he did get his penalty in the second half, and I, I think actually uh, the one cha the one uh, chance that Havertz did have in the first half, uh, the, the one where Chan sort of uh, knocks him off balance, for me that never gets given as a penalty. So I think if you're comparing it to, you know. The, the standard decision given by referees in that circumstance, it, it yeah, it's probably the right thing for the referee to do. But I think there, there should potentially be a rule change or maybe a perspective change from referees or, you know, interpretation, whatever you want to call it. Because when when a defender puts their forearm, forearm on a uh, attacker's back to put them off balance whilst they're having a shot... It, it's not just putting them off. There's a difference. Put, putting someone off is maybe, you know, making a small bit of contact, trying to put their body across the ball or what, whatever. But you can't go f f when, through the back of someone when uh, they're, they're between the ball and the defender. So for me, I think they should be given as penalties. Um, so, yeah, Havertz was put off by it. He was off balance and uh, hit, hit the ball into the side netting rather than on target, which I, I think he would have done given the situation he was in. So, yeah, I, I think they should be given as penalties, uh, in all honesty. They did get the goal eventually, Chelsea through Raheem Sterling. Um, he, he, I mean, he messed it up completely. And I think uh, Chelsea thought they'd taken the lead a few minutes before through Havertz when... He scored a very similar goal to the one he scored against Salzburg uh, in the group stage where he's hit it with his left foot and he's gone in off the bar. Um, but yeah, Sterling, Sterling got the opener and yeah, complete swing with his left foot. Um, he, he hasn't really got a great left foot, to be honest, uh, Sterling, but he, he made no mistake with his right foot after taking it past his man and thumped it in to make it 1-0 and from then on you just felt as though right Chelsea should go on to win this with the momentum they've got and it, it, a lot of it did depend on how Dortmund came out in the second half and yeah Dortmund didn't come out um, with enough aggression I don't think in the second half uh, until they, they were two down to be honest they, they conceded the second via a penalty and I, I thought it was a very harsh decision but I think the one in the first half should have been a penalty uh, Wolf, uh, he's, he's got his arm sort of out here, but it, it's not out in a way like it, it's completely in an unnatural position. I think it's fair enough to say that's in a natural position, because if you're picking at that, I think y y the only other way he can hold his hand is either have both of them behind his back or both of them right by his side, so he's standing like a pencil. So... I, th I think it is a bit ridiculous and the fact that it's so close range and it's not even a shot either, it's a cross from Shai Felix, I think it is. So, um, you know, there's there's not a lot he can really do in that position. So for me, I think it's a, an incredibly harsh decision to give the penalty. And then ha obviously there's the whole problem with Havertz taking it. Now, I'm not a massive fan of players who completely stutter penalties. I think... Doing a little pause is fine, the way that Jorginho does it, the way that Ivan Tony does it. Um, that, a, a, a small pause I can I can deal with. But when Kai Havertz takes a penalty right there and he, he doesn't he doesn't do the thing that you know what we see Ivan Tony do where 
he sort of just waits for a tiny movement in the keeper as he's going up to the penalty and takes a slow run up. What Havertz does is he completely bolts it up to the ball, like runs at full speed, and then he'll stop and, you know, wait for the keeper to move and then put it the other, put, ideally put it the other way. And he does that, but he messes it up and hits the post. When you do that, first of all, you don't need to put it right in the corner. Yeah. Um, because, you know, you should see which way the keeper's gone and you just have to roll it the other side and it's, you know, a simple penalty, it's a simple finish. But Havertz doesn't do that. And because he's he's gone so fast, the Dortmund and the Chelsea players are all expecting him to have struck the ball. Because I'm, you, you can blame the Dortmund players saying, oh, right, well, they've, they've got to wait until there's contact with the ball. But when, when you're like that, you're fully expecting him to strike the ball. And, you know, you, you need momentum to get to the ball. Because I do, you, you do want to get to the ball if, if it does come off a, a, as a rebound. And that's what happens. And there was a Chelsea player who encroached before the Dortmund players as well. So I think it was an incredibly harsh decision for Dortmund to have conceded that second goal. One for the penalty to be given. And the other for the fact that Havertz is allowed to retake it despite, I think, the encroachment being due to the fact that he has started the penalty. I think they should have had a penalty in the first half. So, you know, it, it, you could say it all evens out, but that's not how football really works. You have to base it on a decision-by-decision decision basis rather than, oh, what's the overall balance? So... I, I think the fact that he got to retake it and still did the exact same thing with the stutter, but obviously haven't seen what happened the first time. None of the Dortmund players are going to make like going to move a muscle, and I think even the Chelsea players on the edge of the box, they all sort of realised right. Well, we've got to be careful here because if we do the same thing, we did, one of us just did. Like I, I can't remember who it was who encroached for Chelsea as well as the Dortmund players. I think it might have been Felix or Chilwell on the left. If they they realise if they did that again, they got away with it the first time, you know, that, because Havertz missed. If Havertz scores and they do it, obviously, you know, it'll get disallowed and it'll either get retaken again or a foul will get given or whatever the rule says. So, yeah, I, th I think it was a bit harsh on Dortmund, to be honest. But Havertz, yeah, he took, retook the penalty and did the exact same thing this time, scored uh, and made it 2-0. And... Dortmund stepped up their game a bit from that point on. They, they'd had to bring on uh, Giovanni Reiner on in the first half and then second half they made uh, a few different substitutes, bringing on players like Daniel Marlin, Jamie Bino gittens And yeah, they, they, they gave it a good go towards the end, but they, I don't think they forced as many saves out of Kepa as they would have liked, um, to, to be honest. It definitely wasn't as dominant as how Chelsea were in in. The first half, Chelsea deserved to win this game. Uh, the, there's no denying that they were the better team. And I, I didn't watch the first leg to this game. Actually, I, I watched uh, Arsenal v Man City. It was the same night of the three-one win for Man City. So I, I'm I'm not entirely sure how the first leg went. From, but from seeing the highlights from it, I thought Chelsea. It, it looked like they dominated, and Dortmund just got a very good counter-attacking goal from Karim Adeyemi, and they they could have done with him again tonight because I did feel as though they they were sort of sort of lacking a, a little bit of pace up front and Sebastian Hilaire and Marco Royce aren't, aren't you know the quickest players uh, anymore. Royce was obviously quick back in his day but like you know he, he's, he's getting on now he's, he's not being fortunate with injuries at all so I, th I think Having Adi Amy would have given them a bit more uh, speed on the counter attack is, is what I'm trying to get at here. But yeah, Chelsea they they, they controlled the game reasonably well. I th I think the the three four two one seemed to suit them. Uh, I know Graham Potter's trying to be well recently has been trying to uh, well before the past few games had been trying to do the four three three formation but it, it just wasn't working at all and I think with you know when you've got Reese James and Ben Chilwell who are both born to be wing backs uh, it, it does work a lot better so I, I think it's just using what what he's got in the squad and what works really 
rather than completely changing things up straight away. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if he does try to um, sort of transition into a four at the back system, whether it be 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1, three, three, which he uh, very often used at um, Brighton. Uh, so, yeah, that would be interesting to see in, in the coming weeks. But yeah, this was a, a good performance by Chelsea. And I think it, it's definitely, definitely, uh, I'm not going to say bought Graham Potter time because I don't think he was ridiculously close to being sacked. But what he does do is, I think, sort of gets rid of the conversation for now. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any question uh, over the next few weeks over Graham Potter's job security unless they like lose the next four league games in a row and get humiliated in the quarter final of this competition. Um, that, that's my thoughts on it anyway. So yeah, I, I think Graham Potter can, you know, sleep easy just just for the next few weeks anyway. Uh, it's, it's, that, that's that, that's what I think. Um, but yeah, Dortmund were a bit disappointed. I expected them with how they've been doing in the Bundesliga lately, that they've been in really good form. They had fallen off a bit towards well at the start of the season before the World Cup, but since the World Cup, their form has, has been really good. So I did, to be honest, uh, expect a little bit more, more from them. Um, just like a bit, a bit more intensity going forward because there, there just wasn't uh, enough of that really I, I didn't think um, they, they, they just didn't cause enough problems until the hour mark and yeah in, in the end it, it has cost them um, I, I don't think they're a bad side you, you look at their team and they, they have got the right age group of player through like throughout the team if you if you look at the core of the team you, you've, you've got in midfield Bellingham, obviously ridiculously young, and I know he's likely to be sold in the summer for a very high price. You've got Oz Chan, who is in his mid-twenties. Chan, who's still uh, the right side of 30. In defence, you've got Schlotterbeck, very young player. Nicholas Sula, the right side of 30 as well. Um, so, yeah, for, throughout this Borussia Dortmund team, you, there, there are, you know, young players and players that can get better and, and they've, they've also got a lot of young players throughout the squad as well Adi Amy very young Makoku uh, very young um, Bino Gittins who came on Giovanni Reina as well so yeah it's, 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 it's a team that can get better that, that's definitely for sure but it's, it's at the same time not a team you expect to be winning the Champions League I don't think but yeah, Chelsea freeze to the next round and it would be interesting to see if they can, you know, challenge for the trophy for the, well, once again and try and win it for the third time in 11 years, I think. Yeah, 2012 they first won it. So yeah, uh, that'll be interesting to see. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.